In today's video, we take a look at items and remains that were found frozen in ice. Kinda like these old instruction manuals that belong to World War I soldiers, or these flowers born from prehistoric seeds. But first, let's take a look at something returning from one of our lists that almost seems supernatural. At least until you learn the science behind it. That being number 10, Blood Falls. Antarctica, the world's coldest continent home to the seals, penguins, and the Bloody Falls. Yeah, you heard that right, but don't worry, it's, it's, not, it's not blood. Located in the McMurdo Dry Valleys, the blood falls outflow from the snout of Taylor Glacier. Interestingly enough, it wasn't found to be melted residue of the glacier. Instead, it's been discovered to be a type of plume rising from the ancient hypersaline lake trapped 400 meters beneath the glacier's ice. About 5 million years ago, the ocean flooded East Antarctica, causing a saline lake to be formed. Roughly 3 million years after that, glaciers began to form over the body of water, trapping the saltwater basin below. This water became saltier as the surface of the now subglacial lake froze, and even more so when some of the liquid turned into solid ice, concentrating the salt even further. Because of this, the water won't freeze even if temperatures dip below the freshwater freezing point, having reached saline levels thrice that of the ocean. So, what's with the color? No, it's not red algae, as it was initially chalked up to be. That's already been debunked in a study found in the Journal of Glaciology. The hint is in the name, though, and I'll give you a few seconds to guess. Okay, time's up. If you guessed iron, that's right. Aside from being salty, the subglacial lake has vast amounts of iron with little to no oxygen or light. Once this water comes out through the plume, a chemical process called oxidation happens, which turns the liquid red. The salt also speeds up this process, which allows it to be bright red as soon as it trickles out. Isn't so scary now that you know the science, am I right? Number 9. Treasures of Mont Blanc While rumored treasures like Yamashita's gold have yet to be found, this French climber happened to cross thousands of dollars worth of gemstones on Mont Blanc. Found in 2013, an unnamed climber turned over the trove of emeralds, rubies, and sapphires of the police. The total amount of this haul was valued at a whopping 300,000 euros. Unfortunately, as amazing of a story as the discovery of the stone was, behind them lurks a tragedy. On the 24th of January 1966, an Air India flight crashed at the summit of Mont Blanc, caused by the pilot's miscalculation of the plane's altitude. Everybody on board sadly died. This disaster formed a crater in the mountain upon impact, with almost everything from the plane appearing to have become pulverized. Recovery efforts to collect the bodies were conducted. However, due to the bad weather at the summit, all these attempts were called off, leaving remnants of the plane behind. Some items, such as a diplomatic seal, letters, and wheel hubs were found, but still various precious remains slept in their wintry grave, at least until 47 years later. Some believe, however, that this cachet comes from another crash, that of the Malabar Princess. The Malabar Princess was a flight that happened 16 years before the Air India tragedy. Regrettably, they both met the same depressing end, both events mysteriously having happened on their approach to Geneva. Regardless, its wreckage may also be found scattered all over the area. Whatever their origin, in December of 2011, French authorities rewarded half of the trove to the unnamed climber after years of unsuccessful attempts at locating the family of the original owners of the treasure. Number 8. World War I Relics Remnants of the First World War started to emerge from the ice in northern Italy. Inside a cave was a barrack station on Mount Scorluzzo, with personal artifacts like cups, weapons, diaries, and letters found inside. This fortification is believed to have been occupied by Austro-Hungarian soldiers who fought Italian troops during the White War. This was done to take a bit of refuge from the biting winds. But this cold that tested them has ultimately will preserve their posts until today. The entrance that was shut from the time the troops quickly left their barracks at the end of the war in 1918 was reopened in 2017, when enough ice and snow had melted around the area. This in turn allowed researchers to enter this massive time capsule. So what exactly have researchers learned so far from all the items gathered? Well, most soldiers who have died while deployed weren't killed in action. Instead, what claimed their lives were the icy weather conditions and environment. It was tough for them to gather more food and supplies when their stocks were running low as the summit was prone to avalanches. This led to starvation, and the soldiers then had little choice but to huddle around, wearing shaggy furs and smear their faces with grease to protect themselves from the stinging blasts as they froze in their little hole in the snow. Their situation was so bad that even scientists said that no other soldiers from the hot plains of Iraq to the blood-soaked mud of the Flanders would have experienced the level of difficulty those Austro-Hungarian men had lived through. Yikes. Number 7. Prehistoric Seeds Remember when some years back news broke out that scientists germinated 2,000-year-old seeds? Yeah, well, if that wasn't amazing enough for you, here's some big news. A team of Russian scientists successfully sprouted 32,000-year-old seeds. 
Yes, that's right, it goes right back to prehistoric times. Known as the Silene Stenophylla, a plant native to Siberia, the group believes that an Ice Age squirrel buried the seed cache near the banks of the Kolyma River. The seeds, some found to be mature while others immature, were unearthed from 124 feet below the permafrost, surrounded by bones of mammoths, woolly rhinos, and bison. Talk about an artifact gold mine. The researchers then proceeded to extract tissue from the immature seeds as the mature ones were too damaged to be used. They then placed them in vials for their germination attempts. What they ended up finding is that while the plant was identical to its modern-day relative, the ancient variation had different flower patterns. Further, since it was grown, these plants have successfully created their seeds a year later. But what does this mean for science, exactly? Well, experts believe that the permafrost may hold more ancient gene pools. That means if any extinct plant were miraculously encased in ice, it could be resurrected in our time. With maybe some of them being useful to hopefully help our ecosystem recover and thrive. At least according to Elaine Soloey, the expert who grew the 2,000-year-old date palm. She further says the regeneration of millennia long frozen seeds had significant implications. Soloey states that if they could uncover the conditions that allowed the seeds to still be viable, they would be able to preserve other kernels for longer, aiding projects such as the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Number 6. The Lendbreen Tunic when we think of artifacts preserved in ice, one of the last things we think about would likely be clothes, but hey, history can be surprising. In 2011, archaeologists from Oplands Glacier Archaeology Rescue Program encountered a piece of textile randomly bundled up in a pit on the Lendgreen Glacier. After unfolding and studying it, they realized what it was, a well-preserved tunic partly bleached from the sun and wind. Radiocarbon dating showed that the tunic was made sometime between 230 to 390 AD. This, of course, thrilled archaeologists because only a handful of clothes from that era had been found in Europe. This discovery would allow them to see further the dress and textile production of that age and the interplay between the Northern Europe and the Roman world. But what can we learn from this discovery? Well, it did provide a glimpse into the kind of warm clothing used by hunters that frequented the ice patches of Scandinavia in search of reindeer. With no buttons or fastings appearing as though it's meant to be worn like a sweater, it's assumed to have been worn with some outer clothing or legwear, along with some one-piece leather shoes as well. The patching on the tunic shows that the tunic had been pretty worn, insinuating that whoever left it in a heap was not its first owner. But it's a bit of a flashback for the younger siblings. Since then, more items have been found in Norwegian eyes that still await dating and analysis. These objects turn out to also be from the Iron Age, we can expect to learn more from our ancestors who lived back in the first millennia AD, and potentially even earlier. Number 5. Yucca Mammoth When we think of mammoths, we tend to imagine huge mammals the size of our modern-day elephants or even bigger. This woolly mammoth, however, isn't that big. Meet Yucca, the toddler mummy. Yucca was found by the local Siberian tusk hunters in 2010, approximately 30 kilometers west of the mouth of the Kondratievo River near the village of Yukagur, after which it was named. So I don't know if it's Yucca or Yuka. it's a good question there. Researchers believed it died by falling into water or getting bogged in a swamp. Either way, it was unable to free itself. They observed that its upper torso and arms, which were in the soil, were gnawed by prehistoric predators to the point of those body parts nearly not having survived. Then there's the lower half and limbs, which were quite well preserved. Interestingly enough, despite Yucca being well over several millennia years old, scientists were able to extract flowing blood from within its body, the first time experts were able to do so. According to researchers Semyon Grigoriev, they suspect that mammoth blood contains a natural kind of antifreeze. Don't be surprised if sightings of woolly mammoths in our era happen soon, by the way. This is because of South Korean scientists signing a deal that gives them rights to attempt the cloning of Yucca. Of course, a live version of Yucca. Wang Wu Suk, the man who produced the world's first cloned dog, has already been given tissue samples that may contain intact cells. Now, how successful this attempt would be is yet to be determined. However, Professor Adrian Lister of London's Natural History Museum expresses doubt about the potential of this happening. According to him, claims such as this were said before but with no results to back it up. He further believes that the material scientists are working with is so old that it would be challenging to even imagine constructing an entire working genome from it. Number 4. Frozen Dragon What's an animal you would expect to be encased in ice? I bet it's anything but the frozen dragon of the North Winds, or the Cryodracon for short. Well, it's not exactly a dragon, it is a giant dinosaur that flies, so hey, close enough, am I right? Found in the icy badlands of Alberta, the frozen dragon is a new genesis of pterosaur, with a wingspan that can stretch up to at least 16 feet. You know, those things that flew in prehistoric skies? Well, as much as we can call it by its super cool frozen dragon nickname now, it wouldn't have been living in a frosty land when it had been alive. Back then, central Alberta was a lot warmer than it is now, to the point the pterosaur would have been living in a reasonably temperate landscape. 
This isn't the first time the dinosaur was discovered, however. Its bones have been known to scientists for at least three decades now. According to the Journal of Vertebrae Paleontology, it just so happens that this particular discovery confirmed its genus. Before this point, researchers thought bones like this fell under the Quetzalcoatlus, a different genus of a pterosaur as both are categorized under the group Asterarchid, known for mostly being head and neck as well. If it stood and walked on the ground, which professionals noted it often did, it would stand at 8 feet tall at the shoulder, essentially being as big as a giraffe. Anyway, more work on the Cryo Dragon needs to be done to crack the mystery behind the lifestyle of these fantastic beasts. Mike Khabib, a paleontologist at the University of Southern California, wants to use its limb measurements to calculate how it flew. Others, such as Taisa Rodriguez, a paleontologist at Brazil's Federal University of Espirito Santo, wants to peer deeper into the dinosaur's bones herself. She believes that by taking thin sections of the bone, they could uncover how the pterosaur grew from hatchling to adult. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Did you know scientists were able to extract intact blood cells from his body? It even resembled a modern day sample. Figure out who he is next with number three, Otzi the Iceman. Otzi was a man who lived sometime between 3350 and 3105 BC. He was discovered in 1991 in the Alto Alps by two German tourists, Helmut and Erika Simon. At first, they believed that Otzi was a recently deceased mountaineer until his remains were examined by archaeologist Conrad Spindler of the University of Innsbruck. It was actually Spindler who dated him to have been at least 4,000 years old at the time of his finding. Otzi is believed to have been 5 feet 3 inches tall with a weight of about 50 kilograms. At his death, experts deduced that he was about 45 years old. Analysis of items such as pollen and dust found on him in his tooth enamel indicated that he lived near the village of Feldtherns in northern Italy, but later in life decided to move 50 kilometers further north. His body is exceptionally well preserved and scientists were able to decipher his last meal as well, which happened to be dried ibex and deer meat with einkorn wheat. Also because of the high levels of copper found in his hair, it's believed that Otzi was involved with copper smelting. As for his health, Otzi was suffering from a case of whipworm, which is an internal parasite. He also had several cavities brought about by a grain-heavy, high-carb diet. He had gotten sick at least thrice in the last six months based on his fingernails and was lactose intolerant. The most mysterious thing about Otzi, however, is his death. Scientists know that he was murdered in his final days in the Alps with an arrow to the back. But why? Hasn't been pieced together yet, but experts have reconstructed at least part of his final journey. They believe that Otzi had a chaotic back-and-forth climb that covered thousands of feet in altitude in two days. We really don't know why, but may he rest in peace. And, of course, in display as well. Number 2. Children of Lulaliaco In 1999, John Reinhardt and his crew set out into the Andes, searching for the Inca ritual sacrifice sites. Three days into his mission, they discovered a gravesite buried five feet under soil and rock. There they found three mummies, two of whom were girls, with one being a boy. There was also several gold, silver statues, tectiles, and pottery that were also found alongside them. The first mummy, the Luilaco Maiden, was the oldest of the trio. She was about 15 at the time of her death, and it's believed that she was a virgin chosen in sacrifice to be a royal wife, priestess, or just a general sacrifice. I think we know which one of the three she fell under. The second mummy, the Lightning Girl, was approximately six years old at her death. Lightning struck her body after death as burn damage is apparent, most notably on her face and shoulders. Compared to the Maiden, she was treated with lesser care, and it also appears that her skull was intentionally elongated. Finally, we have the boy. He was about seven when he was sacrificed, and parts of his ribs and pelvis dislocated. Unlike the other two who died peacefully in their sleep, he died under stress, as vomit and blood were found on his clothing. There was also evidence of nits in his hair, not to mention he was the only one tied up. The sacrifice that brought upon their death was a practice in Inca society intended to ensure health, rich harvests, and favorable weather. As to whether that worked out or not, nobody really knows. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. Dogor, the prehistoric dog. We saved the best for last. Dogor, the 18,000 year old good boy. Oh, and guess what? His name means friend in the local Yakuta language, which is pretty fitting to me. Dagor was found in the permafrost near the Indigirka River, eastern Siberia, by archaeologist Mark John Charles Rogerson and his wife Nina in 2018. Dogor's parts were incredibly well preserved, such as his head, nose, whiskers, mouth, and eyelashes. 
This in turn allowed researchers to see that this pup still had its milk teeth at the time of its death, suggesting he was only about two months old at the time of his passing, though the cause is yet to be determined. When the Center for Paleogenetics experts in Sweden looked into his DNA using a piece of his rib bone, they were surprised. While they could tell that Dogar was a boy, they found that he wasn't a wolf or even a dog, really. It isn't for lack of data either, as they have a vast amount of information. This led them to believe that he could be a common ancestor of both, as there is a general agreement among scientists that modern grey wolves and dogs did split from a canine breed several millennia ago. Whatever the case, it suggested that humans domesticated Dogor at the time, and its implications are enormous. There was a long-standing debate on how dogs became human pets. Some scientists believe that people caught wolf pups and domesticated them, whereas others suggest that a strain of friendly, less aggressive wolves hung out near humans, which allowed them to gain access to leftover food. Researchers plan to do a third round of DNA testing to accurately place them somewhere on the canine family tree and uncover which side of the debate is correct. Interestingly, soon they may also have more than just Dogor to work with, as climate change is slowly thawing the permafrost. If he does turn out to be indeed a dog, Dogor would be the oldest ever found. Now, if only he were still alive so we could find out if ancient dogs liked belly rubs as much as their modern counterparts do as well. See you all next time!